everyone, welcome back to Together We Are Thursdays. There's a gorgeous little songbird out here I wanted to catch if I can. <coughs> Pretty little baby. So this week's topic is body image. Um, anything on body image. I guess I just want to talk about the fact that personal body image is so transient and multifaceted. It can vary based on timing, feelings, mood, how you know how you feel about yourself, a certain event. Um, it's very plastic and malleable. Uh, it's not a static phenomenon at all. There are times when we may feel confident. There are times when we may feel ridiculously, hopelessly disfigured. Um, and also to point out the distinction between body image and body dysmorphia. A lot of times people get that confused and think that um, image and dysmorphia are synonymous and are ever-present and, and ubiquitous throughout all eating disorders. And it's not true. That quintessential picture of the skinny girl looking in the mirror and seeing a fat girl, not every anorexic has that. And there are individuals that have body dysmorphia that do not have eating disorders. So the two are distinct and unique. Um, but I think self-image and body image are a state of mind phenomenon that fluctuate given our mood and what's going on in our lives. Personally, I do think a lot of image comes from the transcendence of feeling to thought. For example, when Edie sufferers talk about feeling fat, and in recovery speak we are told that fat is not a feeling and that one should not say this thing. I disagree with that because regardless of what feelings we are feeling that we ascribe to a certain word, we are definitely feeling something at the time. And I do think that's valid and should be addressed. For me, it is a physical feeling. For me, it's an actual perception of physical increased size. I do realize that it is a pathological distortion of mind, um, but I am also very in tune with my body and very aware of how I feel, and for me, it is a very real feeling. I know that personal self-image and body image is something that a lot of us worry about if we have a variation in how we perceive ourselves and tend to use it as a measure of how healthy or sick we are. And I don't think that's necessarily true either. Like I said, I think it's a very plastic and evolving thing. And that feelings are transient as well. How we perceive ourselves is going to fluctuate. It's part of the journey. Um, I also do think that, at least in my research experience talking to people, um, that anyone who has ever had an ED will likely have some of these feelings for life. Um, which is another reason why trying to use these feelings as a gauge for wellness or lack thereof can be dangerous and self-defeating. I think recognizing that it is very much unlikely that we will ever be 100% comfortable in who we are is important. To give ourselves some latitude with that and not be so constrained in our quest for what others might call normality or normalcy. The question of the week this week is to share about one's favorite book. Um, I think I've shared before about non-ED related books, so I thought this time I would share about an ED related one. My favorite has to be Anatomy of Anorexia by Stephen Levincom. You've probably heard me talk about him before. He's the father of modern anorexia treatment. 
um, beginning with research in the 70s, having success with the subject of Beth Little Girl in the World, and then inheriting the world's lost cause cases, or previously labeled lost cause cases, that he was able to work with. This book is a, <clears throat> let's see, little front quote is, the nation's premier expert in treating anorexia has written the nation's premier book for parents, relatives, and friends of young women afflicted with this life-threatening disease. In the back, invaluable to clinicians, parents, teenagers, and adults. So I do feel like it applies to everyone. Um, let's see, easily readable and thorough in its coverage of relevant new scientific information. Anatomy of Anorexia gives the reader a broad perspective on the many causative influences underlying this condition and what families and patients can plan for in terms of its treatment and the prospects for recovery. So this is my favorite ED book. This book here. This is the other edition. I know there's another edition out now with a different cover, but of all the ED books I've read, I would say this one has been the most... The one I would most highly recommend to anybody wanting to understand more about ED pathology and modern treatment options. So that's it for this week. Much love and be well, precious ones. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, let us know. See you next week. Bye-bye.